I want to take a minute to begin with two things that may reside more in the category of pet peeves than scholarly discussion you're about to hear from our guests. One is that Clarence Thomas should have recused himself from this case because, as everyone on that bench today knew, Clarence Thomas's wife was there. She was there. She was present when Donald Trump incited and engaged in insurrection. The essence of our case is President Trump's own statements that he made in public view for all to see. You want us all to just watch the video of the ellipse and then make a decision without any deference to or guidance from lower court fact-finding? He's never at any point in this proceeding suggested there was something else that needed to be in the factual record, any other witnesses that he wanted to call to present his case. And again, the essence of our case is his own statements, and, and in particular, his own videotaped statements on the ellipse. Mr. Murray, just to circle back to, I'm sorry to interrupt. All of those judges know that Virginia Thomas was there in Donald Trump's entourage when Donald Trump was telling his mob to go to the Capitol and fight like hell. Is that why Justice Gorsuch interrupted to cut off those references to the speech at the ellipse? And two, you know that guy at work who is accustomed to being the smartest guy in the room and sometimes has a right to think that? Today, that guy was the Trumpiest character on that bench. Counsel, what do you do with the, what I would seem to me to be plain consequences of your position? If Colorado's uh, position is upheld, surely there will be disqualification proceedings on the other side, and some of those will succeed. Some of them will have different standards of proof. Some of them will have uh, uh, different rules about uh, evidence. Maybe the Senate report won't be accepted in others because it's hearsay. Uh, maybe it's beyond a reasonable doubt, whatever. In very quick order, I would expect, um, although my predictions have never been correct, uh, I would expect <laughs> that uh, you know, a goodly number of states will say, uh, whoever the Democratic candidate is, you're off the ballot, and others, uh, the, for the Republican candidate, you're off the ballot, and it'll come down to just a handful of states that are going to decide the presidential election. That's a pretty daunting consequence. Insurrection is a broad, uh, broad term. We would be deciding uh, whether uh, it was an insurrection when one president did something as opposed to when somebody else did something else. And what do we do? Attorney Jason Murray had this response. There's a reason Section 3 has been dormant for 150 years, and it's because we haven't seen anything like January 6th since Reconstruction. Insurrection against the Constitution is something extraordinary. The Supreme Court is supposed to be a place that takes precedent seriously. A precedent of 150 years of this never happening is not enough for Chief Justice John Roberts. The Chief Justice sat there and perfectly echoed the Trump idea that if he, Donald Trump, is in any way punished for his crimes, then every president after him will be punished for the exact same crime, even without committing that crime. The highest ranking judge in America accepted that perverse vision of American jurisprudence. No, there isn't a Democrat anywhere in the United States of America who can be kept off a presidential ballot in any state using Section 3 of the 14th Amendment as the Colorado Supreme Court has used it in Donald Trump's case. There was laughter that you could hear when Chief Justice Roberts said, my predictions never have been correct. The laughter at what the Chief Justice said was not loud enough or long enough. Okay, I'm done. Now, Let's turn to the rest of what was said in today's Supreme Court hearing, beginning with Justice Kavanaugh and the way he raised the issue of democracy. In trying to figure out what Section 3 means and kind of to the extent it's elusive language or vague language, what about the idea that um, we should think about democracy, think about the right of the people to elect uh, candidates of their choice, of letting the people decide, because your position has the effect of disenfranchising uh, voters to a significant degree. And should that be something, does that come in when we think about should we read Section 3 this way or read it that way? 
What about the background principle, if you agree, of democracy? I'd like to make three points on that, Justice Kavanaugh. The first is that constitutional safeguards are for the purpose of safeguarding our democracy, not just for the next election cycle, but for generations to come. And, and second, Section 3 is designed to protect our democracy in that very way. And third, this case illustrates the danger of refusing to apply Section 3 as written, because the reason we're here is that President Trump tried to disenfranchise 80 million Americans who voted against him, and the Constitution doesn't require that he be given another chance.